Well, when Michael Phillips was a young man, a judge gave him a pretty stark choice. Turn his life around or face 30 years in prison. Today, he's a pastor and speaker. He's a top officer in the T.D. Jakes Foundation and is the author of this incredibly inspiring book of his story. It's called Wrong Lanes Have Right Turns. Please welcome Michael Phillips. Michael, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You, your youth was on a pretty good path. Your father was a pastor. Yes. But when you were 12, he died unexpectedly. Yeah. My father had a stroke and a heart attack and died suddenly. And that sent the lightning bolt uh, through my family and certainly through my life. And that was a big part from the book, it appears, that kind of puts you on a totally different path. And, and there was bitterness and anger at God for taking your father? Absolutely. You know, we all want to figure out what we do with our pain. Where do we place that? And I did not know how to process the pain of losing my father. And unfortunately, um, the church had no answer for that mm -hmm. at that time. And so I was told the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, right? Wow. And what, what that did to me was it put my anger towards God yeah. and really to the rest of the world uh, because my hero was gone. My motto of success was gone. My motto of manhood was gone. And I had no reference point from there. You also saw something that is just horrific. When I read it in the book, you saw a, a, a kid, and he was 20 years old, but a few years older than you. And he had kind of recruited you to do some little errands for him. Yeah. You were standing just a little bit away from him. Mm -hmm. and somebody drove up and shot him dead right in front of you. Yeah. That had to have had a huge impact. Uh, when trauma goes unacknowledged, tragedy often goes uninterrupted. Mm. Whoa, and that's a great statement. Here I am at, you know, 12, mm. um, seeing that level of trauma, and it impacted me deeply uh, to, to the point where I was not safe in my world, and I didn't know how to orient myself in it. I yeah. always felt unsafe, yeah. You... Um ended up getting in some pretty bad trouble standing before a judge. So what happened? And, and how did it come that the judge looked at you and said, okay, kiddo, you got a choice. Here it is. So uh, I actually was able to get my life back on track through sports uh, and wind up getting a scholarship to go to college. And uh, unfortunately, I never got the opportunity to do anything with that ability. I was in a horrific car accident my freshman year before the first semester. Uh. Uh, the gentleman that was driving the car fell asleep behind the wheel. My lower torso was caught underneath the dash of the car. My upper torso went through the windshield. So half oh. of my body is in the car. The other half is outside of the car. When I woke up, I was in the hospital uh, being rushed into surgery. They told me I would never walk again and certainly never play sports again. That sent me into a spiraling depression because my identity was tied to my athletic ability. Yeah. And that was going to be my passport to the world. Uh, and since I lost that, then who was I? Hmm. And when I went back home after losing my scholarship, I got involved back with old friends who were selling drugs, and I decided to join them. Uh, there is no 401k plan for <laughs> criminals or drug dealers. Yeah. And therefore, you're going to get caught at some point. And I did. And I uh, actually decided uh, when we did get caught to turn myself in which is why that's the title of the book. Mm. I was uh, fleeing down to Florida. I was in my car. I had made it as far as uh, Virginia. And I was in the wrong lane, but I needed to make a right turn. Mm. And I was able to make the right turn by choosing to turn myself in. Wow. And so I was facing 30 years um, to life uh, for my crimes. And after six months of pretrial detention, uh, on a Sunday of all days, if you have any dealing with the criminal justice system, you know that doesn't happen. It does not happen. No, it does <laughs> uh, not. On a Sunday of all days, they came to get me out of my, my cell, which was a 23-7 isolated cell. Uh, and they put me in the van and they shipped me down to the federal uh, building to a judge's quarters. And the first thing I noticed about the judge's quarters is that he had no name on his desk. I thought that was odd. Hmm. Uh, and he also had a sign uh, or a picture of the Vitruvian man, Da Vinci's Vitruvian man over his desk. And they sat me down in front of 
the no-name desk and that picture, and then the judge walks in. He sits down in front of me and he says, son, you have an opportunity in front of you. You can either go to jail or you can go to college. Hmm. And I said, let me think about that for a second. Let me <laughs> I said, I think I'll, I'll choose college. We're sending a whole lot of people to prison and locking them up. It's incredibly expensive. I used to say when I was governor, it costs more money to put a person in prison for yes. one year yes. than it does to send them to college, pay full tuition, room and board, their meals, buy their books and give them spending money. And that is the case in all 50 states. Yes, yes. And our prison director, a guy named Larry Norris, who was just wonderful to work with, he used to say, we are locking up people that we're mad at rather than the ones we are afraid of. Wow. And you talk about that very kind of thing. And it's one of the reasons, it's such a powerful story, Michael. I, I really, I'm grateful. God has spared you. Yes. You're now working with uh, T.D. Jakes, one yes. of the greatest spiritual leaders in our country. Yes. And I just marvel at your story. And it's the story I hope that we can see a lot more young men experiencing. And that's why I really do hope people will get the book. It's called Wrong Lanes Have Right Turns. Yes. Michael Phillips. Fantastic book. And you can learn more about Michael through his social media sites. If you go to Huckabee.tv, we have links to the book, to his ministry. Please check this out because most every family has someone who is facing something like that.